sometimes I just like need to slow down and take a break sometimes. To this day, if you still ask her what she wants to do, is be a uh, head football coach in the NFL. So that's, no, no, I'm sorry, she wants to be a player first. Fern peered through the door. Wilbur was poking the straw with his snout. When you have a healthy child and they start to deteriorate and not be able to participate and enjoy the things they once did, it's especially difficult. Sometimes it can get like hard to walk or your balance. Sometimes it might be like harder for you to do some things that other kids, it's like easy for them to do. Like sometimes like my heart beats fast, just like when we're walking to school. Initially really told her just as much as she needed to know. Um, she wanted to watch an F.A. Woodstock video with some friends and uh, they noticed that there were some some people with Friedrich's taxi in the video in a wheelchair and Anna just very bluntly, you know, said, yeah, you know, some, you know, some kids do end up having to, you know, use a wheelchair. I like the movie Rudy. He worked so hard to become a football player at Notre Dame and he and then he finally gets to play on the team. I think I um, I watch them play a lot more and just try and make time to do stuff as a family. It's like related to you know just life in general, like you know focusing on the things that matter more than the things that don't. when I was diagnosed. Um, I wasn't really sure of what was going on, but things were a little different. When my sister was diagnosed, I was probably nine or 10. I actually didn't even realize um, something was maybe different about her um, until I was diagnosed. I was 15. She's definitely become someone that I can fight in and we can talk to each other and relate to each other. So it's nice to have her there, be able to talk to and understand exactly how we're both feeling. I think it was really, really great to have someone so close going through the same thing. I just kind of decided that I wanted to go to UT. When I first got here, I was afraid. I was like, I'm gonna make no friends. And I'm like, I'm gonna be all alone in my room every night. But that didn't happen. Now, people, I don't think, see it as a bad thing. Everyone wants to ride on my scooter or I've become the pack mule of my sorority, everyone puts stuff on me. So I don't let anything get in my way. I've joined as many clubs, organizations, I do as much as I can on campus. Laurel's definitely like so brave and realizing, I think at first realizing that Laurel had been dealing with FA and all these symptoms for so many years before I had and I never even realized. Just goes to show how brave she is. She's just a great person and I hope that one day I'm as strong and everyone looks up to me like they do to her. Me and my sister can do anything. I wasn't gonna let F.A. stop me from going to school. Allison Avery. Yeah, Allison! So at graduation, I decided to walk across the stage because um, I really felt that, you know, I had, I was walking when I first came to Elon and I really wanted to finish walking because I really see FA as just a 
like a point in my life, um, not like something that I'll be here forever. It's amazing. It's crazy to think that I work at the NFL. Um, something like every day I'm like looking at the skyscrapers and being like, do I really live here? Like this, I'm like a New Yorker. You know, she wants my job and it's a little bit uncomfortable because uh, I feel like there's pressure every day to perform at a higher level because she's, she's clearly gunning for my position as chief operating officer. I can't wait for the season to start and I've heard that that's when all the work comes. <laughs> so I'm a little scared for all the work, but I'm definitely excited. Uh, she's an intern here because she deserves it. Um, I, I contend she has more courage and class and dignity in her, in her small pinky than most people uh, or communities have, and so we are so fortunate to have her here. Watching my sister and everyone else also afflicted with Eve, and like, I realized it's not something that should get in your way. You should get yourself around it and do what you want. Because Eve is not my life. It's a part of my life, but I'm not, I'm not like sitting around waiting for something to come. Yeah, my daughter Erin was um, diagnosed when she was 12. She played um, every sport. She skied every mountain in New England that I skied. She was on skis when she was four. But we noticed that she had an awkward gait. So we um, took her to the doctor, Children's Hospital in Boston, and that's when we found out uh, she was 12. And, uh, you know, it was very hard. She was just a little girl. I've been diagnosed for 24 years. So that I was diagnosed in 92. Farah started up in 98. So for those few years, no information, no support, no clinical trials, no, you know, we didn't know anyone else. Um, there was absolutely nothing. We were, we were totally on our own after we left Children's Hospital that day. I love the work that we're doing and helping Farrah. The Farrah team does rely on Erin. They send her their most critical people in need, kids with FA. I've had two moms tell me that my daughter Erin saved their son's lives. And every time I repeat this story, I get chills. Yeah, I just like being a positive role model. Show them it's possible to have a job and live on your own, and drive a car and pay your own bills. You know, it's not over. Yeah, I don't need to get up and run a marathon, but just stop the progression would be nice. <laughs> I actually have a tattoo in my wrist. <laughs> Live your dreams. I think my dream is always like be normal. I'm Allison Avery, living in New York City. I'm Laurel Avery, and I'm a college student living with FA. I'm Bob O'Neill, an FA parent. I'm Erin O'Neill, and I live with FA. I'm Ben Morrow. And Kristen Morrow from Baltimore, Maryland. And our daughter, Anna, is living with FA. I'm Anna Morrow, and I'm 10 years old. For the families that are diagnosed now, 
you have to have so much hope. It's really, it's, it's really scary. But if you look back, you, there's, there's an end to this thing coming. I never, never would have dreamed the amount of love and support that we've received, and it's, it's made such a difference. And then you see an event like the Energy Ball, which is, uh, you know, it's an, it's an old-fashioned barn raising. The progress is so amazing. And I know it's been a long time, but like, from absolutely nothing to all these clinical trials. For us, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We are so close to finding the answers. We just all need to stick together one day, which I know it'll happen, but one day this will just be a memory.